Hey guys, it's Milo back with another video and recently a company called Yunzi sent me this 60% keyboard. It's really nice, especially for the price point. It has a metal plate inside and it also has gator on optical switches. This could be worth $100, but it's actually priced at $75. So I'm gonna be sharing you guys my opinions and I'm gonna be going over all of the features. So let's get straight into the video. When you first get the keyboard, this is what the box is going to look like. It says Skylong on it, and that is the manufacturer, and Yunzi is the company that distributes it. It says 60% mechanical keyboard on it, and when you open up the box, you will see this keyboard. It's gray and white. I think the keycaps look really nice. It's pretty similar to my GK64. And then you'll also see a manual, and this tells you all of the layer keys. So you can change the RGB, you can have the arrow keys when you press the FN function, and there's a lot of useful information on this. So if you do get this keyboard, I really recommend sticking with this. Another important thing is a switch puller and a keycap puller. If you ever want to change the keycap or switches, it's going to be really nice to have these. And also, the switch puller is because this is hot swappable. It also comes with three keycaps if you're a Mac user. This is very important because you get your option key, your control key, and your command key. Basically, you just set it up any way you want. And lastly, we have this really nice braided USB-C cable. It's gold-plated, white, and gray. But I think the final touch would be to give this a red accent just because the keyboard has a red escape key. That would really tie it together pretty well, but I'm not complaining. This is very nice. Right now, I'm going to be talking about the layout, and clearly this is a small keyboard. It's a 60% keyboard, so it doesn't have a function row. It doesn't have a number pad or arrow keys. The only downside for me is not having arrow keys, but it's really nice for this size because it's very minimalistic. It doesn't take up much room on your desk. It's very portable, and the list goes on. And having a small keyboard actually gives more room for your mouse, so you can lower your sensitivity and hit all those flick shots and all those things. I mostly play Minecraft, so I don't know much about competitive gaming, but a competitive gamer would definitely like this keyboard. And it also has a USB-C port in the back, so you can pretty much use any kind of cable you want, and that's really awesome. You can use custom cables, and you can definitely use the one that came in the box, because that one is nice. But I know a lot of people do like to customize everything about their keyboard. The plate is ABS plastic, as you can see, but it actually doesn't have any flex because it has an aluminum plate in the inside, which is painted white, so this really does stick to the white color theme. And it doesn't have any flip out feet, which is a downside, because I know some people really like to have a hard angle for their keyboard. But the angle that comes with this keyboard is very neutral and nice in my opinion. I don't find a need to use flip out feet. I know some people do. But this also has rubber feet on it so it won't slip away. Overall, it's a very nice case and I don't have any complaints with it. It would be nice if it was a fully aluminum case, but for this price point that wouldn't really make sense. And if you're on a tight budget, a plastic case is definitely the best option. The switches inside of this keyboard are Gateron optical switches. In my opinion, they're much nicer and smoother than Cherry switches. They do have slightly less travel time, and for competitive gamers, that might be a good thing. In my opinion, I like a longer travel time. They come in three different flavors. They have clicky blues, they have tactile browns, and they have linear reds. The model they sent me actually have red switches, but I asked for blue switches. That is kind of a bummer. And the stabilizers they send with this keyboard are plate mount, and they're slightly radley in my opinion, but they are factory lubed and clipped, it seemed like. I don't think companies actually clip the stabilizers, but in my model, I couldn't find any of those feet. Uh, I was very surprised with that. I have no clue why they were clipped, but these stabilizers are actually pretty nice. They aren't as good as GMK screw and stabilizers and genuine cherry stabilizers, but they are a step up from basic keyboards, which is definitely a bonus. The keycaps are gray and white, and they have a red accent. I like this colorway. I think it looks pretty nice and clean. And they're die sub PBT keycaps, so they will fade away over a very long period of time. There's not really anything to worry about with that. And they're PBT, so they don't shine. 
They're very great quality. I'm pretty sure they're 1.4 or 1.5 millimeters thickness. So these are very high end keycaps. And I know I've said for the price point many times in this video, but I can't really stress this enough. This is great if you're on a budget and it's definitely up there with the Ducky 1 2 Mini. And I think it's slightly better than the Ant Pro 2. I'm not exactly sure what the profile of the keycaps are, but they are very rounded and they don't change over the different layers. And that may be a downside for some people because it's kind of harder to find which row you're on, but it may just take a couple of weeks to get used to that. And once you're used to it, it's not really a big deal. The RGB is very bright and vibrant. It is accessed through the function layer and you can also find it in the software. There's many different profiles that you can choose from and you can also program your own. It's single key RGB so you can basically come up with any kind of combination that you want. I will say the software is kind of bad and hard to get to. Uh, once you learn the software it might not be as bad though. And one of the weirdest features for this keyboard is that there's actually a microphone inside of it and the RGB responds depending on what the microphone hears. I do feel like this is kind of weird, like they're spying on us, but I, I don't think they're spying on us. They wouldn't do that. And I don't think it's able to send any information, so uh, I wouldn't really say it's anything to worry about, but it is interesting and if you get this keyboard, that I do recommend messing around with the RGB and trying to figure out how that audio waveform stuff works. I don't really know how it works, but maybe if you do, comment down below. And aside from customizing the RGB on this keyboard, you can customize the physical keyboard itself. So you can take off the keycaps and swap it with other keycaps. I honestly like Cherry Profile more than the keycaps that came on it. So I might buy like a $40 pair of keycaps for this keyboard. And then it's also hot swappable. It isn't normal switches, so you have to choose optical switches. But there are many other Gateron optical switches that you can choose from. And optical switches are very cheap because they don't have any metal components inside of them. So on a website called ePath Buy, you can actually pick up a set of these optical switches for only about $12. That's a very amazing deal. And you can choose yellow switches, silver switches, black switches, and many more. And aside from that, you can also go inside of the keyboard and lube them. I used Super Lube. I know that's not really the best thing to use. You should use Crytox or other lubricants like that. But all I had was Super Lube on hand and I was kind of impatient. And you can mod the stabilizers by clipping and lubing them even more. And you can take the plate and the PCB off and then put a sound dampening layer inside of it. I put in a napkin inside of the keyboard. I'm not really sure if that works as well as foam, but I didn't have a block of foam on hand, so I just used what I had. Like I said earlier, the software is pretty confusing. Bad C Tech and a few other YouTubers did say that it's confusing, and I will stand by what they said. It's pretty hard to customize your RGB and there's a lot of unnecessary profiles and things inside of the software. But I actually don't use software at all. Really the only thing I'd use software for is reprogramming keys and also messing with the RGB. But I know most gamers and people that use this keyboard will not ever download the software. But that is one thing to take into consideration. And you can download QMK and a few other softwares but those are enthusiast based and I'm guessing a lot of you guys won't download them. You also have to know how to code to use a few of those. So the main software is probably the only option and it's not the best, but uh, you know, you just have to decide if that's really a downside for you. And most people, the software will definitely not be a downside. So in conclusion, this is a very nice keyboard and it's definitely cheap for what you're getting. You get great quality keycaps, their PBT die sublimation and everything like that. You get a metal plate with a plastic case. You have amazing Gateron optical switches. They're very smooth. The only real downside is the software, but that won't bother most people. And this could definitely be worth $100. It's on par with the Ducky 1 2 Mini in my opinion. And that's all I really have to say about this keyboard. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. And peace out, guys. Thank you for watching this video. This was my first review, and I hope you guys liked it. So, see ya.